Hello. Okay. Boom. We're going to continue on our series of episodes talking about the Naruto characters. Are they good characters? Today we're going to talk about can they be improved? Can you improve these characters? And hey, you know, I always say no no disrespect to Kishimoto. He had to draw a chapter every week for like a billion years. Um, I, I heard some stories about the editors, too. I heard there was a lot of pressure from the editors to, like, push things in the direction of kind of main plot line. Um, that may have had something to do with having, like, reducing screen time for other characters. Screen time, page time. Um, so that may be, you know, that may play a factor. He may have actually wanted to give some characters a little bit more of a limelight. Okay, so are they good? Can they be better? How do we make them better? Shizune. Um, so there, Shizune gets uh, a good deal of screen time in the Tsunade arc, right? She's Tsunade's best bud. Tsunade is all drunk and kind of depressed, and Shizune is kind of the counterpart, her opposite in some ways. She's like kind of the serious one, you know, she's not like a total buzzkill, but she's always like looking out that Tsunade doesn't get too hammered and doesn't lose control too much. So she's she's trying to like balance Tsunade. <clears throat> um, you know what? Going off of that, if we wanted Shizune to sort of have like more, I don't know, emotional character development, uh, why not show Shizune's like the toll this is taking on her? like a little, you know, a little mini, uh, not an arc, but a little mini, I don't know, uh, side story with Shizune where you, you kind of see she's been hanging out with Tsunade for a long time. Tsunade is sort of like depression and her drunken antics are like gradually wearing Shizune's um, temper and, you know, wearing her spirit down because she knows Tsunade is better than she is acting, right? Um, and, sh and Shizune has to be her balancing act, her balancing weight to, like, keep her afloat, you know? So that, that, I mean, that's compelling. You have a character trying to prop up another character who, I mean, it's not really touched upon, but Tsunade is, is going through some kind of mental health struggle, presumably. Um, she's kind of abandoned Konoha. Her, the most important people in her life are dead, which is not uncommon for ninjas. I mean, Kakashi certainly is like that too. But, uh, you know, Tsunade has a, a legacy that she's kind of abandoned. And she's the grand grand uh, child of frickin' Hashirama. And she's taken off from the village in their time of need. <clears throat> so you can definitely see how Shizune could be, you know, Naruto is, is the one to bring Tsunade out of that. Um, we could have more of a Shizune angle to see how she grapples with that, what she does with Tsunade that kind of keeps her from going too far, um, how she supports her. They do seem like they're best friends, and she continues to support Tsunade when she's the Hokage, when Tsunade is. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, what about a little what about a little side story with like the two of them, just the two of them? Why are they friends? Why does Shizune like Tsunade, right? She's a doctor. She's she seems to be kind of like a, a, an experienced student of Tsunade in some way. It seems like because Tsunade is a doctor and a medical ninja, and Shizune is too, who, by the way, is a jonin. What the hell? Not a special jonin. A full jonin. What's the story there? How did she become a jonin? That is extremely rare. That's reserved for, like, high-level people only. And we know... That if you're a special jonin, it's because you excel in one area. Shizune is not a special jonin. She's a full jonin. And that means even if uh, medicine is her expertise, um, she has a full-blown, rounded-out set of skills that makes her qualified as an elite ninja. Um, that is pretty unusual, and it is pretty weird that we don't see why Shizune... She seems like she would be a special jonin, right? It seems like she only does medicine. Um, that's not the case. Why is that not the case? So exploring her training, maybe. Exploring her, um, yeah, her expertise. When did she become a jonin? That's interesting. Um, and her relationship with Tsunade. Okay. 
Oh, baby. I was hoping we'd get an edgy. Uh, I think I have this Neji rare. It's a pretty nice looking rare, honestly. Okay. Um, the story of Naruto is sort of this dichotomy between the hard workers and the geniuses, right? You have Naruto and Sasuke. You have Rock Lee and Neji. Rock Lee and Neji, that was important at one time. <laughs> Before Shibuden, that was a big deal. Rock Lee is part of one of the hugest arcs in the, the whole series before Shippuden, um, the Chunin exam, you know, his fight with Gaara is just legendary. Everybody fucking loves that. Um, and Neji was built up to be the super genius as well, who Rock Lee couldn't beat. And, you know, Rock Lee wipes the floor with Naruto and Sasuke immediately when he meets them. And he's never beaten Neji. Neji is just built up to be this impossible force of nature. Um, okay, so we see that arc... We see Naruto kind of reforms Neji. Great. <clears throat> what is he doing in Shippuden? Um, how could he make it better? Well, what if Neji, who is allegedly a genius, um, teams up with... Na Basically, any character can be improved if you team them up with Naruto. <laughs> any time spent with Naruto will improve any character. That is my theory. Because Naruto is the main character, and the more he interacts with you, the more you get to shine as a character. Neji's a genius. How about he tutors Naruto? What if we make Neji a wind-style guy? Okay? Asuma very briefly talks to Naruto about wind-style. Um, I don't know if that's like an important Asuma beat. He doesn't have a lot of moments in the story, sure. That can still happen. But what if Naruto is looking to take wind-style a little further? And maybe before the Rasen Shuriken... Before he even considers doing that, he's learning wind style from Neji. Why would Neji have wind style? Well, his whole thing is ro about rotational force, and that seems a little wind kind of based, you know? I know it's not, but let's say it is. Heck, let's have Neji invent some new techniques. The Hyuga techniques start out cool, and they're very limited in Shippuden. There's only two things. There's 64 palms in rotation. What if we turn rotation with the genius of Neji into a kind of tornado vortex move, right? So you you are creating force that not only sort of grinds an opponent to dust, but is also sucking them in. Because rotation works great if somebody's right in front of you, and you get to smash their face with chakra and throw them away. It's not useful if they are not engaging you in close combat, which is Neji's weakness. Yes, even though he has air palm, why not make a rotation that sucks a foe into the rotation like a tornado and then they get they get torn apart then you solve the long distance problem with neji naruto learns some wind style and you know we generally get to see more of him and we get to see more of him being a genius and coming up with some techniques my gosh the hyuga need more techniques and they need to cross them and they need to like do some crossover with elemental stuff into their jutsu it's it is too flat in Shippuden. Shippuden has all sorts of crazy shit going on with new moves and Rasen Shurikens. We need a little bit of that from Hyuga's, especially the, the, the genius himself, Neji. Um, is there any, like, emotional side of things that we could really do? I mean, it would be nice to see him with Naruto and just, like, bonding more. Um, hey, you know who else is a Hyuga who doesn't have any character development or screen time? Hinata. Uh, you know, you could come at it from that angle, right? Naruto and, and Neji, you know, they could be very tentatively, Naruto's being very shy about it, very tentatively kind of like examining, or at least kind of making jokes or gags at the very least about Hinata's fascination with Naruto. And uh, who, you know, who better than Neji to sort of bounce those gags off of and, uh, you know... I'm sure he, as as a genius, and as Naruto is kind of a dummy, I'm sure he notices if Naruto doesn't. And uh, maybe he would even be the one to sort of point that out to Naruto. Naruto seems pretty oblivious about it. Uh, hey, after Pain attacks the village and Hinata, like, straight up dies to save Naruto. Straight up fucking dies. <laughs> maybe Neji would be like, hey, <laughs> let's talk about what just happened. Um... So yeah, <laughs> did you did you notice that? Because we haven't like brought it up. Hinata kind of just like declared her love for you and, and sacrificed her life. 
And that would give Naruto a chance to maybe come to terms with that, or maybe explain why he doesn't ever mention it or talk to Hinata about it. Is there some reason that he is sort of afraid to do it? Is he afraid of having a connection of that nature? Like, we don't know. Okay, all good ways for Neji to be improved. By gods, do not let him die to a stick. <laughs> that is bullshit. Okay, either you have to kill a bunch of characters in the war arc, right? Guy dies, I don't know, Lee dies, fr friggin' Kakashi dies, who knows? It doesn't make sense that Neji's the only one who dies. And also, I have to double check if this is in the manga or if it's anime only, but when he's in the Chunin exams, you see him project chakra out of his body directly without rotating it. He, he just sort of sweats out a wall of chakra that blocks Naruto's punch, and then he rotates, and then Naruto goes flying. So it, when Neji dies to the stick, he says, I don't have time for the rotation. But he doesn't need time for the rotation, because you've already established he can exude chakra out of his body, out of his system, out of his pores, I don't know, and block physical objects like punches or whatever. You, you don't have to rotate to have that defense. Um, why doesn't Neji come up with a partial rotation move where he's like flicking his hands around and he is not only deflecting things with the rotation that is just sort of trailing from his hands, but he is using it offensively like a huge, huge hit from a, from a partial rotation. Kind of like uh, Choji's partial expansion, right? That's like a high-level move when you, can, when you can take a move like Choji's expansion and do it only in one specific part of your body, or very precisely. That seems like a higher level move. So rotation, what's higher than that? Certainly the tornado thing, but also if you want to do partial rotation. So if a stick is coming towards you, you can block it by doing the rotation just from your palm and knock it away. Um, or knock away missiles, incoming attacks, people, whatever. Uh, he can't die from sticks. He can't die from sticks. If he has to die, sure, make him duel Obito or something like that. Make him stand up for Naruto. Make him protect Hinata in a crucial moment. You know, have him use all his genius moves against Obito. It's not enough in the war arc, whatever. You know, give him a, a heroic death. It can't be sticks. All right, <laughs> I've said enough. We kind of talked about Naruto in that same fashion as well. If you pair any character with Naruto, they get better because... They get the screen time. They get the, you know, they get to react to to Naruto and his philosophy and his sort of bright, uh, hopeful heart. Um, and obviously, he he does have moments where he bonds with most of the other Konoha Twelve, who are kind of the characters who need the screen time to develop. Um, so yeah, okay. Here's the thought. Um, one thing I will say about Naruto. <clears throat> this is going to be a long episode. Uh, you know, he's on an island with Killer B, and he's learning to master the QB chakra, and he fights his dark, his dark inner self, right? We get dark Naruto coming out of the waterfall, and one of the things dark Naruto says is, he talks about, how, obviously, how everyone hated Naruto as a kid, and he talks about Naruto's resentment that he was hated as a kid. Um... This is kind of another one of those, uh, you told us about it, but you didn't show us. Wouldn't it be great if we saw Naruto, like, actually seething with anger and hatred and resentment against the people of the Leaf Village? And it doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to become evil, but I think for his sort of courage and hope and, you know, his, his philosophy of, like, you know, everybody can become your friend, you just have to give them a chance... I think it would resonate even more if he had a lower low, right? And he, he, obviously, he's very lonely and sad, but if we saw some of that actual, like, anger and resentment, which is, that is included as a sort of a Daigo rewrite thing that he does in that channel. Naruto is, like, a little bit more angry at the beginning, and the resentment of the villagers sort of makes a little bit more sense because... You know, he hates them, they hate him, um, and it takes a long time for that to go away. It kind of just fades away after the first chapter, right? Like, 
Once Naruto is going on missions with Kakashi, nobody's calling him a, a demon fox anymore, right? Nobody in the village gives a shit. It's just at the very beginning, they, they have this sort of phobia or this dislike towards Naruto because he's Jinchuriki, he has a tailed beast in him. And, uh, you know, let's take that further, make that a bigger challenge for Naruto and make his, you know, when he does face his dark self and you hear all about this resentment, like, let's have seen some of that. So him overcoming it, not just against his doppelganger, but throughout the whole show is like more of a thing. That's, you know, that's one suggestion I would have, I guess, uh, for Naruto. <clears throat> but the, you know, he is able to basically grow um, alongside any other character. So all the other Konoha 12 basically um, become better characters if they spend time with Naruto. Ooh, baby, look at this. SLR Rainbow Rock Lee. Hot diggity damn. And I'm glad we're seeing Lee because Lee is... Lee is one of the most sort of unsung champs of the underdeveloped characters. Like he was such a big deal. And in in the in the hardworking genius slash genius dichotomy of the whole series, he's crucial, right? He uh, he beats Naruto and Sasuke. He you learn in the tuning exams, he doesn't have chakra, he can't mold chakra. And that's huge, right? Because you've seen him succeed, you've seen him kick ass, and you realize, oh my gosh, he's been, he's just been like busting his butt this whole time. He's so strong, but it's only because he's really committed to being this kind of person who can't mold chakra and just going into taijutsu. Um, yeah, he doesn't have anything in Shippuden. That's the big problem with Lee, right? He has a great arc before Shippuden. Um, his leg gets broken by Gara. He sees Sasuke <clears throat> fight against Gara and win. He sees Naruto beat Neji. Um, he's determined to heal. Tsunade does the risky surgery on him, whatever. He's better. He fights Kimimaro. It's great. It's a really good arc um, from start to finish with Lee. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what like what do we what do we need him to do in Shippuden? We need him to be in Shippuden. Um, there are, there are like three times where it sort of looked like Kishimoto was trying to lean into the other teams that are not Naruto's team. The, the Gara rescue arc has Team Guy with Lee. The very short, kind of inconsequential Itachi pursuit arc, where like Naruto's trying to find Itachi, that has Hinata, Kiba, and Shino. And then, obviously, the Hidan and... Uh, Kakazu stuff, Asuma's death, that has Naruto with uh, um, Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru, which is good, but only really for Shikamaru. So there were three different arcs. Each one of them had Naruto teaming up with one of the other teams from Konoha 12. And Gara Rescue Arc is great. It has a lot of good stuff. Sakura is great in it. Um, Team Guy is cool because you see them for the first time after Shippuden. They're early characters. You're seeing that they're much stronger, whatever. They don't really get a lot of time, and they sort of fight a little bit against the Kazami clone. Uh, there's not a lot there. There's not a lot there. Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, if Guy dies and Lee carries on his legacy, that's huge, right? That would be a hugely emotional moment for Lee. Um, if Guy, at the end of the series, opens the Eight Gates dies um and you know maybe okay okay <laughs> it would be stupid to have lee open the eight gates again but i would if naruto has to sort of deus ex machina save somebody i would rather it be lee than guy like if guy does the eight gates dies heroically and then like lee opens up to gate seven or something and he's fighting madara or he's fighting whoever's there um and then Naruto kind of keeps him alive. That would be cool. It's not much of a save for his whole character arc, but just as a thought. Um, what are we? What are we gonna do with this boy? Uh, yeah, the, so much of Shippuden is just Akatsuki, right? It's Akatsuki after Akatsuki. And if you're not in on the Akatsuki fight there's there's not, like, you'd have to add an extra arc, right? You'd have to add something more. Um, just like missions, you know? 
especially even before Shippuden, um, if we can just get Naruto on a couple missions with some of the other characters and just like seeing them excel, like if Naruto was, was out there with Team Guy before Shippuden and we just got to see how good Lee is, how good Neji is, geez, how good Ten Ten is, who even knows how, how good she is, right? We don't see anything from her. Um, we could get, we could get more moments. Um, Lee's arc, Lee's character is really good. I think he just needs more, more time to sort of kick ass. And, uh, you know, you, you sort of see his backstory. His backstory is not what's great about Lee, I think. Um, it's that he's, he's a hard worker and he's willing to do anything. Um, it's hard to get better than the whole Chunin exam stuff with Lee because we already have sort of seen him come to his natural, uh, character arc. So more time, more missions, um, more little side stories, right? The, the, the main story is so plot oriented and so focused on moving forward with the next Akatsuki that we don't have a lot of time for char other characters to shine besides Naruto. Heck, if Neji's training Naruto in ninjutsu, why doesn't Lee train him in taijutsu, right? He's, he's the number one taijutsu man from the Konoha 12. Let's do that. Let's have, uh, let's have team guy who are ostensibly the best team from Konoha 12, um, you know, in the Chunin exams at least. Let's have them uh, teach Naruto how to do stuff, right? Um, he's, Naruto, like, is very good at learning on his own and practicing on his own. So let's pair him up with uh, each member of Team Guy, sure, even Ten Ten, and let's have them give him their expertise, right? He can do ninjutsu with Neji, taijutsu with Lee, <laughs> I guess weapons with Ten Ten. Sure, why not? Give Naruto like a weird fucking weapon. The, 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 the weird weapons are cool in Naruto. The fans, you know, the weird chain shit, whatever those two Chunin guys who always hang out together have. Um... Kotetsu and, uh, fuck, what's the other guy's name? Izuma. They have some, like, weird big clamshell fuck of a sword bat thing. Give Naruto some freaky, crazy Kishimoto dream weapon like that. Um, <clears throat> with Tenten. All right, what's this guy's name? Bai, Baiki? Biki? It, it be, no. Uh, Sand Guy. <clears throat> Yeah, he kind of disappears. We never really see what happens to him. He doesn't die. He just goes away. It is pretty cool in the the Konoha Crush arc, which is after the Chunin exams, even though it's kind of the same arc. Um, it's cool to see all the, the leaf in the sand Jonins fighting each other. Um, okay, what I want to know from this guy is he is the Jonin looking after Gara's team. What's his relationship to Gara and to any of the kids? Uh, Kankuro or Tamari. Is he looking out for them? Is he does he consider them just like tools? Does he think Gar is a freak? He seems kind of stern. Um, was he just appointed to be their Jonin kind of like as a disguise for the Chunin exams? Is he not normally affiliated with them? What does he think about looking after Gara, who is, you know, kind of the demon child of the sand? Um, let's just do let's just have a little a little exploration. It doesn't have to be a big arc. It doesn't have to be like a huge character arc thing. But, you know, let's see how other people, other ninjas in the sand, kind of feel about Gara and the sand siblings. Um, does Ken Kuro, you know, even if this Jonin guy thinks Gara is a freak, does do Ken Kuro and Tamari interact with him? Are they like protective of Gara? Are they scared of Gara? Um, you don't get a super good sense. They seem a little scared of Gara, but like. Do they have any sort of emotional attachment to him when he's not a nice, nice boy who's talking to Naruto? Um, so, sure, let's have a little emotional time um, just to see, just so they can feel each other out. Just so we can tell what's what uh, with their character relationships. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> uh, cool card, new guy. Uh, Shizune Neji, I think we have before. Uh, I think we have this SR, and wonderful rainbow SLR. Lee, the hardest working man in the world. All right, that was fun. That was a long one. Hope you enjoyed. Let us know in the comments. Um, I hope you have uh, not a hard working day. I hope you have an easy day.